everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. I'm doing a follow-up on these scrap paper ruffle rolls by Treasure Books that were and following on from Treasure Books video there was a second set of papers that she created doing the same process or very similar process and I thought about incorporating it into my previous video but I really wanted to make the paper ruffle curtains that we made to go on our book. I will link that video below in case you haven't seen it. So I decided I wanted to make the second paper ruffle roll that was, was featured in the same video that I watched. Um, not quite sure how I'll use it in my journal but I do have some paper scraps here that are from the paper that I'm using so I'm hoping I can incorporate that. In actual fact the last one I did I started on a straight stitch and then went to the zigzag but I think I'm just going to stick with a zigzag and I might create my first ruffle before. I do anything else so I'm just going to do a quick double stitch or back stitch and then I'm going to lift that with my foot down and create my first ruffle okay and it doesn't need to be perfect and then treasure books and I'm sorry I don't know your first name but <clears throat> excuse me she had little scraps of pattern paper all different sorts of pattern paper that she used as part of her ruffle roll so I have some here from so this is from the paper pad that sorry about the focus guys this is from the paper pad that I'm using from Stamperia so it has two sides and I've decided I'd like to use the back of the papers because I haven't really featured them in my book anywhere at this stage. So this could be a fun way to do that. Okay, so making the paper ruffle is exactly the same as the last tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and you keep adding. I'm wondering if I need something to lever. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to remember what I used last time. It's a little bit thicker to create the ruffle. So I'm just using my all to wrap the paper around to get it to bend and that's working quite well and I might add my next piece of colored paper so this is a very thin strip here um, but it doesn't need to be big to be effective so I'm going to go with it and see how it comes out. piece here is folded in half so I'm thinking I might tear it and that way I get to use both sides of the pattern paper so I really like the green on this side 
Okay, so... <laughs> I didn't actually have any scraps of the tea stain paper left in my stash so I have cut a piece of tea stain paper to get my strips um, and I ended up cutting them at three quarters of an inch for each piece so there's a little bit more uniformity to these than you would necessarily have if you were using scraps So I have a fold here across the top and then across the bottom so this piece of paper is going in on top of the bottom piece but under the top piece keeping that thinner strip over the top of it this piece of digital and this is the one that I printed two to a page so I had one page on this side and one page on this side and there was this white border across the middle and I've just inked that up because it does have some patterning here that I didn't want to waste so I've popped a bit of distress ink down the center just to tone down the white and I thought I'd give that a go on this paper ribbon to see how it comes out and I might leave it there I would say that was quite successful so I might turn the video off 
and I will turn the camera around and show you the final result. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back everybody. This is our paper ribbon as we've made it, or our paper ruffle ribbon. Um, so we started with the papers from the paper pack I'm using at the moment. I think that's so pretty. So that finishes about here where this green and blue starts. Again, they were scraps that I had in my, my stash that I really didn't know what to do with. And I'm loving the way they look. This one here is, it does have a little bit of pattern, but it's more of a, a natural, almost like a brown speckle, I suppose. So, and you know, if you put that on the page and you had, say, those three colours, that would be quite fun, depending on where you cut it. So, more of the brights and the bluey green. And we have that neutral, so I really love those together. I think they're really pretty. And then I love the way that little scrap came out. And you wouldn't know that it actually had a white strip down the center of it by looking at it. So I think they're lots and lots of fun, and I would. And I would like to thank Treasure Book so much for the inspiration and for sharing this idea because I think it will be a fun, fun way to use up scraps and add extra elements to my journals. So please don't forget to like this video if you like what you see and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see future videos. Hello everybody. So just following up from our paper ruffle roll that we made and I thought I'd pop the camera back on and give you an idea of a way you could use it. So I've popped my journal on the table, the one that I'm working on at the moment, and I have here the decorative coloured paper ruffle that we've made, or ruffle roll, and just holding it across my page, you could turn that into a little tuck, so either sewing or gluing on either side and having a tuck spot in, what, in the middle. And I did just pull the other end across and in line with what we did with our curtain, our ruffle curtain, you could possibly sew those together or two strips. It doesn't have to be those two strips, but any two strips together to create a wider band for your tuck. And because there's two rows of the coloured paper, it actually is very fun to look at so i just thought i'd give you a quick idea of a way you could use it and i hope you enjoy this i certainly do it's lots of fun very inspiring and i look forward to playing with it some more anyway everybody hope to see you soon happy crafting and have some fun bye for now